video apps. We've seen how to use Apollo client and how to configure it to use with the subscriptions, with, with, with queries, mutations, and um, stuff like that. So uh, today we will talk about those things. And I, I, I actually here I kind of, uh, just a second, yeah. So um, so here I kind of changed the uh, agenda a little bit. I added a bunch of things. And um, uh, so we will be implementing subscriptions today too on the server. Uh, so it's a cool part. And authentication, I'm moving to the third day, to the, to the fourth day. Um, so tomorrow we'll talk about input input values, authentication, custom scholars, interfaces, unions, validation, and execution. So the idea is today we will have working server with all the basics, and tomorrow we'll kind of uh, add more functionality to it, connect it to a real database. Today we'll use like global value as a database. Um, instead of just uh, yeah and um, obviously for your homework you can uh, do whatever you like you connect you can connect it to database and uh, stuff like that <clears throat> so to recap on yesterday um, we got let me just open it so this is day two so just to recap what we've learned so far uh, on the second day. So we, uh, we've gone through the consumer GraphQL API in vanilla JavaScript. Then we've gone through Apollo client. Um, we talked about Apollo Boost for um, configuring our, um, for basically consuming our um, um, GraphQL API, um, like for, for easier setup. And uh, then we talked about like a little bit about requests and error handling. Um, we talk. We will talk more about that tomorrow. Maybe today also we'll cover uh, several things. Uh, we talked about client state, uh, the ability to have uh, local state management. Uh, it's a really a really cool feature, and actually it um, gives you an ability to um, basically. Um, use only GraphQL as your state management. You don't need Redux, you don't need Mobix, so like state tr <coughs> Sorry, you can just use uh, client state for, for that. Um, we talked about um, creating query component in React by using wrapping query component. Uh, we use the same like mutation component or the same uh, kind of API um, for our mutations. We talk about refetch queries that we can use for the like instead of um, hitting subscriptions, we can refetch the query uh, after a mutation. Uh, and then we started our mi migration from Apollo to Apollo client. We imported a bunch of packages. Uh, and basically we had HTTP link configured. Uh, HTTP link is basically where I configure my uh, endpoint for uh, uh, mutation, sorry, for subscriptions we configured WebSocket one. Um, so we talked about the pool link as being the whole network layer and uh, we gone through the docs a little bit. And uh, we talked about uh, authentication a little bit so to recap on that obviously we will talk more about that tomorrow but to recap on that um, we have some kind of middleware here and we can use it here we can use it passing a link to basically add headers to every um, to every request um, then we install a bunch of packages and uh, use subscriptions for uh, uh, create a, like a WebSocket link and use subscriptions. So the idea with WebSocket link and HTTP link, we have two links and we need to re redirect our operation based on operation definition. So we used uh, split from Apollo link. You can see it over here. We use split and um, 
we check the kind of operation and uh, if an operation is subscription then it, it was the um, websocket link otherwise it was uh, HTTP link he has a bonus um, I had a link here for React Native Web implementation so I haven't talked about that it was committed to the repo so you probably check this um, with hooks like uh, it today um, basically you can use React Apollo hooks library and uh, instead of using um, query and subscri uh, subscription and mutation wrapping components uh, actually query and mutation because subscription is not there yet you can use use query or use mutation we've seen it um, closer to the end of the um, of yesterday a stream uh, then we talked about angular how to set it up like the pro uh, angular project with the with apollo how to, how to set it up uh, we talked about um, uh, passing our apollo provider to the um, in a little bit different but pretty similar way as we did in react we had cache same like in memory cache we had link uri and uh, dependencies in component itself we talked about the fact that we need to uh, basically inject our apollo inside and then we can use this apollo watch query and pass our query um, then there will there are, there are a bunch of links with demos and uh, finally we talked about view um, and with view api is even sim um, more close to react one for setting things um, i think it was somewhere here uh, yeah i just throw this like same as react except you use view use uh, and pass view apollo and then uh, basically a oh, bunch of odd things that we can do or we can uh, call our mutation we can um, queries we also have wrapping component for queries and mutations in view that we can use in templates um, yeah I think I I put it twice bonus uh, bonus section but uh, okay so for for the exercise what you had to do is basically something like that and this exercise uh, yeah not best way to work present it here <coughs> let me open it <coughs> in different data <coughs> and the second uh, so what we will do I will open it from day two um what was that uh, exercise so we had this um to to create this for exercise so this is basically the project that will follow you well actually already it follows you from from yesterday it will follow you to today's exercise and and uh, to and finally to tomorrow exercise basically uh, today and tomorrow we will try to move from from Hasura to use our own server and we'll see how to create our own server so um, yeah ah, okay so, uh, just a second I'll rewrite stuff because I see I have a bunch of questions in chat and I kind of missed them uh, just a second Yeah, so regarding like the connection to MongoDB, yeah, we will do connection to MongoDB tomorrow. We actually we will do b both MongoDB and, and Postgres, and yeah, we'll see connection to database in general. Uh, okay, so this is for our exercise. Um, I won't uh, solve this exercise uh, today because it's we pretty much 
solved most of it in the class yesterday uh, in our explorer here so we had add posts with variables uh, it wasn't here it was in our uh, zoom browser yeah sure so we had it in bunch of a uh, bunch of examples here um, I think well just a second let me close things because okay now okay this is better and uh, for lesson notes it was a link somewhere here I think now this one is with you I just open code sandbox and we'll see what we've done yesterday so this is the now this is the vanilla one um, let me see which of these uh, sandboxes I think uh, it's that one so pretty much you need to kind of fork this um, sandbox or you can create your own and uh, <coughs> most of your exercise is just re-implementing it and adding a bunch of other fe uh, features so right now if you look at the uh, at the exercise we um, had this add blog post form with submit we already have it here we have the blog post so the only thing that you're supposed to do is basically um, play around with queries add a little bit more info on the on the post author um, and edit delete and comments is is a new thing that you need to add you need to add comments and you need to add um, like editing functionality and stuff like that so basically it's kind of the same uh, that we worked uh, worked on is just with the different flavor uh, okay so this was for um, the, the recap what, what we did yesterday and today before going to server I want to um, get back to our console here and uh, actually let me just remove it because it's a spoiler <laughs> for what we will uh, talk about so um, let me just open a couple of things here for myself just like a speaker notes and uh, yeah so we'll start with uh, talking about directives and um, then um, like fragments directives introspection in general we'll talk about various tools that we can use we actually use a couple of that we will use a couple of them uh, today and um, then we will dive into creating our um, uh, scheme defining our schema on the server implementing subscriptions talking about type system and stuff like that um, so um, speaking of um, like the first part is directive basically directives I have only two directives that I, I can use so sometimes I want to say that um, so if I pass uh, if I paste add here I have either include or skip and this is not uh, specific it cup it's coupled to how it's implemented on the server but in Hasura you have these ones and it's like a best practice to implement those for any GraphQL server. So the idea is sometimes I want to run this query <coughs> and I want sometimes I want to include this user and sometimes I want to um, omit this uh, this user from the query payload. So what I will do I will add include user it's a boolean 
and it's required so my include user need to be specified somewhere so how do I basically check um, if it's true um, sort of doing like if statement um, for including a um, bunch of data so I can use directives for that so I can use either include or I can use either skip and um, both of them are similar um, if I do like include I can pass if inside it's the only thing I can pass if inside and then I will pass my include user so right now if I will add it to my query variables and uh, I will pass it as let's say false then if I run my get posts I will get my data but without the user and um, if I want to do the other way around, I can either pass, I can pass through here, for example. That this is a, an, another uh, thing that I can do. If I pass through, then let me run it, get posts. I will have my user with, with first name and last name. Um, okay. Uh, I think this zoom level is, is, is pretty good. Okay, so uh, then um, I can use skip instead. So if I will use skip and I run my get post, I basically have the same, but like include will include this when uh, this predicate is true. Skip will uh, omit this if this predicate is true. So basically it's kind of the same uh, thing. And it's really useful. Because if you don't have such things as directives uh, here, you need to uh, command enter run query. Uh, yeah, it can run query. Uh, you're right. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so um, instead of using include, you can you will probably do string interpolation, and it doesn't look good. So it's better to use directives for that. So let's. Uh, this is include and this is skip. Okay. Uh, uh, now it runs only the last one, I think, because I have three defined. Let Let's try it. Uh, get planets. Yeah, it's, it runs the last one. So it looks at run another query and another subscription and I have a bunch of them. So what I can use, I can use something that's called fragment. I can define basically a fragment of my query. So let's call it user with avatar. And my user with avatar uh, ha has to be on something. So it has to be on some type that already exists. So for, for, uh, for us, it's on posts. And uh, then we will pass here full name. No, actually, it's a user. So it's on users. And it will get first name, last name, profile. And uh, this one will get avatar URL. So now, instead of passing all of these, all of this, I can just paste it like, like this, and it looks like a um, uh, spread operator, right? So, um, like object spread operator in JavaScript, it's not that, again, it's like the query language, but it, it looks pretty similar, and if you are used to this in JavaScript, it's pretty straightforward to understand what's going on here. So you see user with avatar is kind of here inside. So, uh, now what we want to, um, want to do, for example, we want to uh, omit all of this. We, we want to have our user in different, different, different queries, different, uh, well, not limitation, but we, we want, uh, want it to be in different subscriptions and queries, and uh, it's pretty much reusable block. So we will call it fragment and call it user fragment. 
and this one will be on posts because I need to select a user on post and my user will be user with avatar and uh, typically I uh, want also comments of this user and from my comments I want to get a message so now I can do user fragment and it will be here. I still have an error because I don't use include user. So let's uh, actually add this. Uh, actually, before solving this, let's uh, add another fragment. Our post will be probably something that we reuse. So let's create a new fragment. Um, we'll call it posts uh, data posts and it will get these fields um, now I can put it inside put inside post data and my user fragment so now I can add directly to that I can include it if have include user uh, if ah, I forgot call uh, include user. So right now, if I run that, I will get profile URL, avatar URL, comments, timestamp, like everything. Um, and if I skip that, let's check the if it, if it's working. If I skip, then I get just a simple data without it. So um, let's actually reuse that. So let's say, uh, let's for example uh, have this get post with include user for, and without stamps, uh, timestamp for our get post. But let's say we want to have um, a subscription called uh, sub posts. And it will have uh, it. It will be so. It will be on posts without any ordering. I just want to get all post data, and I want to get user fragment. So now, if I run my sub posts, uh, I still have a problem with user fragment for some reason. Uh, if both fragments have the same uh, subject, um, well, um, that's why you have on posts, because it's a fragment on something. You can't use it without that. And basically, ah, you mean if post date and user uh, fragment has the same, the same field? Let's actually do that. So if our user fragment will have, uh, let's say, content. So what will happen if I will run uh, get posts, I will still have one content because it will be kind of merged, basically. Or I can, uh, let's say, I want to add ID. And it just works. So there is no uh, actually conflict here because after all, it's all about getting data. So if you mention this field in several places, it will bring only one instance of this field, unless you're using aliases. Let's actually try to do that. Um, So we'll have two instances. Okay. Um, get posts, and we're getting both content and content allies. Uh, cool. So we use fragments, we use uh, use allies, and yeah, let's run our subscriptions. So we've seen there was a problem 
sub post 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 data user fragment let's run it we had problem with include user because we're passing it here and we don't need to pass it here right we just need to execute it without any variable and uh, we get our subscriptions and it seems it's working because I see it's it's kind of connected uh, yeah so these are fragments so sometimes speaking of like conflicts um, or like doing um, including data uh, conditionally um, if let's say I'm not sure I can do it here um, but let, let's actually try that let's actually uh, try to do um, inline fragments so basically it's the like similar you can think about this as a, like a named function and anonymous function so like inline fragments is basically the same fragment you just don't name it you just write on post for example and you pass content here and then this is an inline fragment so let's say I have uh, let's try to do something interesting so I will have fragment on posts and I will call it um, have post ID and I will get ID now I will have another fragment on on po no actually thinking um, no it's st it will it's still be on post so yeah does make sense but the idea it does make sense here for this um, the, this specific API but let's say you have um, like depend depending on um, some kind of um, like depending on to include user uh, it can be instead of include user let's name it like predicate and based on play predicate we can include like post ID or we can include uh, for example uh, user ID something like that and this one will be include if we have include user so it's kind of uh, including chunks of our um, uh, of our fil uh, data here for our fields basically um, something like that and here it will, will have skip if <coughs> let's run it um, something wrong expecting why I'm not non null type pull it. yeah because I need to specify it Now, if I run it, let's see. Okay, so I have user ID because I have user. If it's false, I will have post ID. And I will have post ID here. So, something like that. So, these are inline fragments. Right? So, um, this is how I can basically. Um, and I can go to any um, degree of complexity here. So one of the things that I suggest you to do for your homework, try to see what um, what queries are reusing the same same content and try to. Well, actually, let's let's do it now. Now what? Let's do it now. Uh, from yesterday's example. Uh, just a second. I will open it. Um, Add link somewhere here. Uh, actually, let's just open co open code sandbox. OK, 
Okay, so um, this one. Now let's see in our components here. So in our components, in posts, well actually we had add posts, right? So we had user with ID, first name and last name. And with add posts, um, and actually for our post list, So inline fragments help you to uh, hoist a nested property, post user ID can become post user ID. Let's try that. So what you're saying is if we have user ID, let's just try it as it is. instead of having it like that what we will do we will do this one on post and you will have user id something like that we will still have it nested because this is basically just reusing uh, part of data it's not like renaming so renaming is aliasing right so you can use aliasing but you cannot kind of rename things like uh, hoist properties and stuff like that at least i haven't used it uh, maybe it's it's possible i haven't used it uh, and found any use case for for using it uh, Okay, so get back to our sandbox here. So, for example, user and first name and last name can be totally a fragment defined. And um, when we define this fragment, we can reuse it in uh, several places. So, um, yeah, so this is like how, how you, you do that. Uh, let's go to next part of our yeah so we talked about uh, inline fragments and uh, now we pretty much covered all the I would say basics of uh, everything you should know on the on the client and um, now we will move to the server and we will create um, actually three uh, different variations of, uh, of servers um, I wonder if we should uh, actually before that let's dive a little bit more into a uh, type system because then server will be more um, uh, you understand it better basically so with our type system we talked about the thing is we, we have strings integers and um, of these like co uh, collections type of thing so these collections basically and all of these like users and like these ones, is, it looks like object, right? So it's called GraphQL object type. And these are most of the fields you use. <coughs> like the deep down, the fields uh, having like string and integer are uh, scalar fields. So it's called a scalar. And uh, we have int, float, strings, booleans, and we have ID. So um, ID basically it's, uh, like unique identifier, you can use it for like refetching from cache and stuff like that. Um, here, for example, we'll also have Scala uh, on um, Hasura, we have Scala called uh, UID. Uh, it's another thing. Basically, anything that you see here. Um, so these ones like date, for example, or numeric text. These are scholars, right? Um, so scholar type, we can uh, actually create our own. So by default, we don't have, for example, date scholar, but we can create that by uh, just typing scholar date. Uh, not here though, because this is the client part. We can do it on server. 
Um, also, we have enums, we have lists, and um, um, you already seen that we using exclamation mark here. So you will see uh, exclamation mark in two places on the server on the client, and it's important to differentiate between them. So if you put it here for the uh, including uh, basically uh, exclamation mark is uh, meaning it cannot be now, right? So if you think about that in a sense of uh, client, it means you have to provide this variable has to be there, um, I, and. Um, you can think about that as like a required variable. When you use it on the server for return types, it means it will never be null, and it means if it will return for some reason from your resolver functions, which we'll cover in a bit, uh, if they uh, something will return null, and uh, our um, types uh, type defined as um, not null, um, then we'll have an error, and we we'll also need to treat uh, that on the server. Uh, in addition to having um, um, like all these squares, mutation subscriptions, um, let me open really quick our um, Star Wars uh, API separately. Uh, actually, I can see link here, I think. Yeah, so this is the link. Because uh, I think I will see it here in the graphical. No, actually, I won't. I won't see it. But uh, the thing is, I have introspection. So introspection is a cool uh, feature of GraphQL, and basically, um, it allows you to have all these documentation here. Uh, the idea is that I can get all my queries and types uh, information by querying type or schema. So, um, for example, if I um, like query my schema with all, uh, uh, let's say I want to query all directives and I want to get directive name. Uh, something like that. Yeah, include user. Need to delete that. So now I have only two directives. Now let's see. I can have uh, query types. Let's see. Um, how many query types I have. So I have only one, I have, I have only the root query and um, all of these goes under this root query. Let's see what I also can query. Let's query just types that we have. And for types, so let's query a name. So you see, these are all our types in the system. So we have a bunch of those. We have uh, addition to type. Let's see, uh, operation. Let's see, kind. And uh, fields and uh, our fields uh, let's say name something like that okay so we have for example a scala type boolean uh, if you can find out if required field can have now or not uh, you can uh, I think you do. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, so have kind uh, of type. What won't give us? It's knowable. 
basically we want to see if this field is nullable so it's probably will be uh, here maybe kind will do the job no actually it will bring us nested yeah i'm not sure probably yeah probably it's possible um i'm not sure how it's done though it's a good question ah here okay cool so we can see um the type of the field so we we'll see that this is color this is page info which is not now and let's get for example description or something yeah we have a description of all these fields so we have uh, we, we can query a bunch of these so the cool thing about GraphQL uh, because you have introspection so there is um, that cool um, like syntax called reason ml um, and with ReasonML, for example, there was, I had a, a talk, um, I think a month ago, um, about using GraphQL with ReasonML. So there, for example, because everything is typed, is typed there, I can basically call this introspection, run introspection query. Because we, it has all the introspection features, I can just download JSON of all my uh, schema, how it looks like, to the client, and then basically i can just uh, have auto completion of my queries and editor and stuff like that um i think you can also do it with javascript uh i'm not sure you, i think you have extension for, for that or something like that something like that let me search for extension uh, i will look at it um later on and i will just add to the repo the link if i'll find something uh, but yeah, so uh, introspection is a really powerful thing, and th this is what enables us to get all these documents, uh, documentation here, and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, speaking of documentation, I can totally add um, descriptions here for every type, and like similar as it has description here, I can totally add this on, on my server, and uh, I will I will do it today with you. Uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, let's let's just start creating our server, and uh, yeah, let's just start with, uh, from the very beginning. <clears throat> we will start with uh, the most complicated solution, I think. Um, but the most like the, the basic one. Now, actually, let, let's start with the, the best one. Let's just then go down. So we'll start with uh, creating our directory. Um, GraphQL demo1. Let's init it. Now the zoom, the zoom is fine. The zoom factor. Okay, so I created. Uh, I have package JSON inside. Uh, let's make the you know, call, call it source, and let's add index.js and uh, now start adding a bunch of things to our index.js. So our source in the JS So just simple a simple node server is running and okay that that's fine I have no dependencies yet. So the first dependency that I want to install and this is like the easiest part I think for creating like the, the easiest way to create your own GraphQL server um, 
is uh, to install a package called GraphQL Yoga. And uh, this is, by the way, some uh, somebody asked about like difference between Prisma and Hasura. This is, by the way, the GraphQL Yoga is something built by Prisma. So, um, and the difference is Hasura is something that runs, it's an engine that runs on top of your Postgres database. It auto-generates uh, all these APIs for you. With Prisma, you actually need to code that. It gives you really awesome ORM to, uh, um, basically anything and um, like the syntax will, uh, is pretty like, like it gives you a bunch of tools it gives you a bunch of uh, it's based on lots of community packages and stuff like that so right now let's um, start creating our server and we will start with uh, smaller and uh, we'll remove this console log so we'll start by importing graphql server from graphql yoga so this is the first thing that we will do um, now what we gonna create here we are gonna create um, we want to recreate the same API we had because uh, it will take time and um, the exercise for today and tomorrow for you is basically recreate everything that you used in Hasura for uh, on the server side so it doesn't mean you need to you, like recreate all the queries that aggregated or the uh, mutations like uh, update mutation stuff like that anything that you already use and anything that you will use for the uh, yesterday for yesterday's uh, exercise you need to recreate that on on the server so that's that's the idea um, so let's do uh, we will do like really simple we have a bunch of uh, we will have a bunch of posts and we'll have a bunch of ideas of this post and uh, for simplicity, I will just set a global variable ID count, and our ID will be just an um, in incremental ID or something like that. Um, now my posts, also for simplicity, will be just an empty array, and I will just push and, and uh, slice from this array. Um, tomorrow we will actually use a proper database but today, just for simplicity, we will use a, a global uh, variable. So now we need to create several things. We, in order to uh, start our server, uh, what we need to do is to define it. We uh, we need to define our server as new GraphQL server, and we need to pass type definition, type definitions. Um, and here we will actually pass it um, a, a file pass. So we'll have schema GraphQL file created here. And in this file you we will type all our schema definition definitions. Um, other th uh, thing I, that I need to create, is resolvers so I don't have resolvers yet so let's uh, create them and uh, the first thing that we want in our resolvers we will have query well ha uh, whenever I say the like, query this will be result for uh, result for the type of, of query so um, Let's say I will have posts, and my posts will just return posts. Now I need to define my types. I need to go to my schema and to define um, what is basically a post and what is a query. Let's define our query. So our query will be, we called it posts, right? Actually, it's the other way around. You start from here and then you go to resolvers. But it just like to show you from from the this direction. 
uh, so posts will be array of something so this array of something is basically array of um, type post that I haven't created yet let's create it so my type post will, will have um, ID it will be an ID and if I pass exclamation mark me it, it it cannot be now it will get a title as a string it will get a content as a string and I will get uh, published as boolean and author so my author will be another GraphQL object type author um, and uh, I will have also a list of comments so this is not now this is not now this is not now this is not now comments are kind of optional and comments actually it's array of type comment so right now I see that I need to add two more types I need to add type author so my author will have ID of also type ID and will have um, let's just stick to simple name another type that I need to create is a comment so I'll create type comment my type comment is ID and it's content of this comment so as you can see it's um, it has extension GraphQL it has specific query language uh, you can use it as a separate file you can use with JQL tag the same as we did with the uh, like, uh, creating our queries um, so I prefer um, to use it as, as a separate file so now what we have, I have query that return post and it's supposed to, to work. So, so what happens if I hit this query? Uh, if I hit this query, it will go to resolver and will run this function. So there is no like magic behind the scenes. Basically, whenever you resolve, uh, resolve part of your, uh, your schema, it will run a function. So um, the cool thing is it can be different um, different resolvers um, for like every part of your um, of your schema. So if you have two separate databases, let's say users are in DynamoDB, or let's say users are in MongoDB, and um, all my posts in Postgres. I can totally say that posts are uh, resolved from here, but something uh, like users will be resolved from like different different place, and that's how I consolidate things. So, what the magic part happens under the hood when I try to reach this query that uses uh, author, and let's say I defined resolver for an author to. Um, bring data from other data source so it will hit this data source and, and bring the data and it's up to you to configure it in, in the, mo um, the most optimized way, way. Uh, so okay I have this query I have this uh, yeah um, this defined now I need to define my, my to run my server actually so what I have here, I have uh, type definition, I have resolvers, I need to start my server. And uh, let's say it will be pulled. And uh, I will have several things here. I will have an endpoint, will be GraphQL. So it will be localhost uh, 5577. Uh, slash GraphQL. That's where we um, he, where uh, we need to query uh, when we consume the data from a pull client, right? Or if we use just a fetch with a, with a post request. And there is a cool <coughs> additional cool thing that is available in GraphQL Yoga. It's also available in by default in Apollo Server, which we'll also cover in a bit. But here, uh, it's it's the thing called playground. 
So it's similar to um, graphical. It has a uh, better UI, uh, like better looking UI. And um, yeah, we'll see it in a bit. So what I also want to do is uh, I want to run a callback function and just console log. Um, GraphQL uh, playground is on. Let let me just paste this in that I have. <clears throat> and the other one that I had here. Um, forgot back tick somewhere. Yeah. Uh, cool. So right now, what we'll do is open our terminal. And we still have probably unexpected. Uh, yeah, we have syntax error somewhere. Okay, resolvers. Um, well, ah, yeah. No, still problem. Just a second. I have new GraphQL server type definition that this is fine. And uh, what's happening with my resolvers here? So const resolvers equals query post, post commas where commas. Have comment here. Ah, okay. Forgot somewhere. Type definition. I have a comma here. Um, it's probably a weird mistake <laughs> somewhere. Uh, server setup. Type dev. Yeah, I have a comma here. So I have so it's supposed to it's supposed to work. Okay, uh, weird because uh, it had a comment here. Uh, it had a comment here. Uh, okay, let's go to playground. Open in different tabs. So, um, we'll put it here. So this is the GraphQL playground, and um, what I can do now. So I define type mutation, and I will call it create draw, and it will get title as a string, and I will get content as a string, and I will get author as a string. And uh, I will return type post. So this is my create draft setup. So right now, if I go to playground, ah, actually, uh, I don't have node mon, so I need to restart it all over uh, let's run it go to my playground reload so now what I will have I will 
have this crate dropped. And by the way, with the play the um, GraphQL playground, what you have here, uh, you have tabs. It's pretty much graphical on steroids. So you have uh, you can have different tabs. You can have um, schema definition here. So if you want to see how it's defined on the server, and you can actually download that. Um, you can um, do lots of things. Like I have docs and uh, go like inside, similar to like Mac interface, right? So going from from the so I will like in graphical it just drills down, and then I need to go back here. It's uh, make more sense just to see everything, like the whole um, the whole path to the to the type. Um, and we have we can have type details here so for example let's add description to our now actually let's run create draft mutation so I have it here So create draft as now, and right now, if I run get posts, nothing happened. Why? Because I haven't defined any resolver that does this thing. So even though it's available in uh, uh, like in documentation, it's available because I have uh, this is the schema. I have introspection. The uh, this tool is working on on this uh, like the introspection feature and. I can see that mutation exists, but my server doesn't know how to resolve it. So it just simply resolves uh, to nothing. And um, yeah, so let's create our mutation resolver. And let's, let me just uh, put comma this time missing exclamation or content string in mutation uh, yeah um, it, it's not missing it's like whatever you define you can <coughs> say you're creating your draft without, without any content you can say I, I will have only title and author it does make sense I agree but it's, it's not that it's it's required to be there uh, so yeah, for mutation, creating draft, I will just simply uh, do the following. Create draft will be, uh, will get parent and will get args. This is the default. Uh, what I get and then uh, I will create post. Actually, I will Lots of typing, so I'll just paste the snippet. So what uh, what I do, I create a user ID, uh, like post ID, which just simple as that, like post underscore ID count, um, and um, title will uh, be something I get from from args, and content similar something that I get from args, because these are arguments, right? So I want to get them from, from this mutation. And um, I will have empty comments, I will have an author. ID will be just author with a new date. Um, and args author. And I'll have published false flag. Not sure if it's defined, let's see. Yeah, it's defined here, publishes boolean. It's also like a mandatory one. Um, fine, now, if I run it, go to my playground. If I run this at draft, it's still not work. Ah, maybe I need to refresh. Just a second. Now still a problem. Let's see what I've done wrong here. Uh, add draft 
it's still here in this, uh, sorry in the docks something wrong with the resolver I guess maybe I haven't saved I think I haven't saved it so I have my resolvers here uh, yeah so, ah <laughs> yeah it's funny so I created this post that's fine it's like a local variable it does nothing uh, no not three stuff <laughs> I just need to push it to posts <laughs> And I, because uh, it's a global variable, right? So it doesn't matter, I created this const, it's like uh, an object scope. Uh, so, and I want to return post. Uh, post, push post, and return something's odd with the. Uh, have problem here with the syntax just a second I will just paste a snippet and that's it will be faster okay so the same one I had some maybe misspelled something uh, let's restart node go to our playground And we have post zero. If we hit this one, we'll get the first post. So um, that's cool. We already have queries and mutations implemented on on the server. Um, and now let's add uh, additional ones. So let's get go to our schema. Let's add um, another mutation. Um, let's call it add comment. Have ID of ID content uh, as a string. This one will return just an ID. Um, have delete post with ID, and we will have a publish. So again, it's uh, simple like really simple example uh, tomorrow we'll have also authentication here implemented and stuff like that um, okay so now I need to basically create my uh, resolvers right so I have already one I have create draft but I need other ones and um, I will just um, paste my snippets here um, instead of just like typing this uh, just a second okay so what I do here I have add comment resolver which gets parent and arcs um, I just go um, I basically create a comment on my if my post ID equals post ID and I just uh, pu uh, push the comment inside my post comments um, and I return the ID for delete post I just like find an index and uh, then uh, I will just uh, return the whole, uh, the whole thing um, and then with the publish I just uh, change this flag so it's like pretty simple let's try to run our server again and you see here add comments defined in resolvers but not a schema so if I add another function here in resolver it will fail because uh, it has to match so I think because I haven't saved this file Which one is not defined is add comment. It's actually it's defined, but 
Uh, let's try it now. Hmm, that's that's weird, because you see, uh, so that this is defined. Maybe something is wrong with here with my yeah because I added it like one it has to be inside mutation so I have this great draft now it's supposed to work or not uh, ah no sorry it has to be here What's the problem now? Unexpected token somewhere. Um. Just a second. Uh, let's do it that way. Let me just close it because uh, I don't see actually what, what I have here. So I have create draft, spell token, uh, comma here. Now we can run it and it will work. Cool. Um, so we have our playground working. Let's go inside. Go in our docs, we see a bunch of things here uh, for like adding comments and stuff like that. Um, because we restarted, we need to create our first post. Let's create a second and third. Now let's just run it. Have three posts, um, and all of them are not published. Let's take a look at this one. I need to uh, pass an ID of post to publish. So I will call notation publish uh, post and I will pass uh, will be ID of uh, let's say post zero. <coughs> and it will return ID or uh, published uh, title, something like that. Uh, okay, cool. This one is published now. If I run all my posts, one is published, others are um, still in a draft state. Uh, now, if I want to add comment, I can do something like that, add comment, actually let's me, let me zoom a little bit um, and close this one. So for adding comment I need to pass add comment and add an ID of post, it will be post 1, no actually it will be post 0 and I need to pass something else to pass content it will be something like that and uh, must not have selection since type ID has no subfields let's see what it returns add comment it returns ID so we can run it that way because we don't have any subfields for the uh, return type because our return type is just a scholar. Cool. So we have return type of ID. And actually, let's call it that way. That will get ID. This is like adding alias for, for the mutation result. Uh, cool, so we have our server implemented, 
uh, it was pretty fast, right? Um, but obviously, when you deal with like uh, databases and stuff like that, you need to figure out like authentication and lot lots of stuff. So that's why we use Hasura at the beginning because it gives you everything out of the box. Uh, you just like uh, create this uh, like st deploy this engine with Docker uh, anywhere, and um, it runs on on top of Postgres, and it does the the, uh, the whole like typing work for you. Uh, like you don't need to create your schemas. But what I can do actually, I can use this server, I, I can take like this server deployed somewhere and then I can use it as a remote uh, remote schema. Um, actually, it's an interesting idea and let's try to do that. Let's go to our code sandbox. And um, let's create a new one. I have a node. So now I will just paste my index file. Uh, no, sorry, it's a spoiler. Uh, I think, yeah. No. So this one uh, is my index file. I will paste it here, and then I will have a new file called uh, schema GraphQL. Let's paste it here. And add it as dependency GraphQL Yoga. And now we'll try to run it. I don't need the browser here. I need the console, I think. Now it's tested. Let's see. Uh, okay, this is saved. Yeah, okay, everything is installed. That's fine. And now we need to run it, and I'm not sure where do I run it uh, from. Let's see. Uh, actually I actually haven't done any node uh, development inside Code Sandbox. Uh, so that's why. Um, I'm not sure how to run it, but we'll, we'll figure this out right now. Let's see. If I save it, supposed to. To run it somewhere. The browser with hello world. I don't need hello world in the browser. I just want. Let's try to run. I'm not sure if I can do that, but let's maybe try to run it like that. Interesting. Um, okay, this is a server control panel. Um, okay, that was the bad idea because I don't know how to run node uh, inside Cosmos and Box. But <laughs> uh, now this is just for going live. Try to change something, maybe it will rerun. I don't 
thing is, I had browser here opened and uh, I like console opened. Oh, this is the, like the different console. Um, okay, nice. So sandbox container started and connected. Now, I think if I go with 8080 or something, then it might work. Um, okay, so let's try to run it with Playground. Yeah, console is the browser window, we have the... The thing is I need kind of public... So I need terminal, but... Um, so it's... It, this is the, the sandbox, but I want to hit... Well, not the actual sandbox, but the, the container. So I'm not sure with that. Um, anyway, I will... Ah, okay, let's, let's do it from here. Uh, nice, okay, it's working, cool. So I have console here and this is like where the server is started, so if I do like playground here, then uh, it will be the same. So I have playground, I have my schema, I have docs. So what I will do now, I will take this playground and I will go to my console, sort of console that we used, and I will add remote schema. Uh, not the play playground, but the GraphQL part. And I will name it uh, custom post. And I'm pretty sure it won't work because post already exists in the current GraphQL schema. So if I will, uh, where was it? That's a different sandbox. Let's close this one and let's get back here and change it from being posts to being um, I don't know, blog posts. Blog posts. And uh, this will return posts. Uh, and also in terms of types, the query need to be like blog or get blog posts. And instead of using post, let's name it blog post. Here, to name this type differently. I think we also need to name comments something here because we already have type comment. I'm not sure. Let's let's try that. Okay, not defining the schema. Uh, query blog posts. Um, query blog post because in mutation. Uh, no, here in in. Now this is fine, but here in uh, query, ah, okay, it get blog posts. Okay, this is a variable. This is the container. Maybe I change something. Um, Okay, um, just a second, uh, let's try to rerun it again, let's do a change and rerun it, 
<clears throat> Stalking and Lapa lost, but Let me just hide the browser. Um Okay, something's wrong with the container right now. Cannot get this gateway here. Um, okay, what was the problem? Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I haven't planned on, uh, on this, so I, I got the idea. No, no, not the port. The port is, uh, is fine. You mean just running it? It's still available on localhost. I don't want it to be available on localhost. I want it to be available on container. And as you see previously, previously there was sandbox container. Yeah, I already changed that to eighty eighty. Still, uh, still there was a problem for that. Ah, okay, yeah. Maybe changing this one will do, but I, I don't think that's that's the thing, the problem. It's still running on, uh, on 8080. Ah, cool, yeah, thanks. So now it's running. And now what we will try to do, we'll try to stitch schemas. Edit remote schema. And uh, cool, so we have our custom post. Let, okay, let's go to Hasura uh, graphical. And now let's just have our uh, add drop mutation. Put it here. And run it. Uh, I still see a problem with that. Uh, maybe I need to reload. Let's see. Uh, for our mutation, what was that add draft? Let's let's look for a draft. Uh, for create draft, sorry. It returns blog post, blog post, and it's supposed to return ID. Let's see what's happening in our code sandbox. Uh, must provide document. So there was an error somewhere. <clears throat> right if we'll add draft here let's try to run it on uh, from the browser and we'll see what's the what's the problem um yeah, I need to run it with Playground. Um, React poll on the front uh, is the stack, and uh, for um, in terms of like Hasura and GraphQL Yoga on the back, so you can use Hasura only for uh, uh, like you can use it basically for uh, running on top of Postgres if you want to do like your business logic. And stuff like that so you do want your own like custom server um, then yeah you can use GraphQL yoga and then do schema stitching another thing in Hasura is that you can uh, instead of writing custom logic you can use the serverless capabilities like event triggers I won't cover this during the course I will cover that uh, tomorrow at 11 uh, at 11 a.m. PST on Hasura streams I will be going more in depth on like Hasura console, not on the 
graphical side but more also on the serverless side um, yeah let's try to run our station okay so it's running here let's try to reload it maybe and we'll see what's going on I still have an error somewhere it might be because I'm using local variable or something like that I'm, I'm not sure um, I, I will check this at home and I will um, get back to you tomorrow about like what's what's the problem because it's supposed to stitch schemas properly um, I mean it's it's still a uh, stitching schema so the problem not in, in schema stitching problem with the resolvers here well, I will check it and we'll see what, what's the issue so um, now like when we use GraphQL Yoga um, what I want uh, additional things that I want to show you is do another demo uh, now we will instead of using GraphQL Yoga we will use Apollo Server which is another option of using GraphQL um, let's Create the directory, call it um, Apollo Server, and uh, actually, you know what? I will just open the code and just walk through the code because uh, it will be better. Um, It's pretty much the same as you've seen right now, with uh, less uh, capabilities, I think. Um, so I can use basically uh, instead of uh, installing GraphQL Yoga, I install Apollo Server, and then I use Apollo Server on JQL from Apollo Server. Have the same resolvers here, so nothing changed here with the resolvers. Um, the difference is a little bit here, so the schema is jql tag and passing it um, in the following way and uh, instead of writing graphql um, server you can run a poll server and basically as you can see it's pretty much the same by default you will have a playground so um, both of them have different options so if you look at the graphql yoga uh, go into the repo what you can uh, see here is that it already uses uh, like it's based on Express all server it uh, based on we will use uh, actually subscriptions right now we'll see how it can be used and it has like GraphQL tools which is a set of tools uh, you can use uh, not necessarily with GraphQL Yoga, also with Apollo Server and with like a bunch of um, other things. Uh, and now, uh, just a second. Yeah, my stream looks that it's it's fine. So, um, yeah, and uh, you have a bunch of features. So you're wel uh, welcome to to read this. Um, later on and uh, right now what we'll do we'll implement subscriptions and now in the code sandbox let's implement this locally uh, now actually before that I want to show another thing so um, Apollo Server is another viable option but I also can use just Express uh, Uh, it's called Express GraphQL. Yeah, totally. I will share it. Um, 
okay so this is the express uh, so the express we have um, express express graphql and we need to get built schema from graphql we um, um, start, uh, create our app uh, running express and then i set my schema pretty much a similar way but this is with like the less capabilities from both like a pull server has a lot tons of additional stuff like caching mechanism and stuff like that graphql yoga also um here you just have like all the implementations in, in your hands you don't have uh, such amazing tooling and stuff like that but you still can use it so you can use graphql http for this endpoint and just pass a schema and pass graphical so for example now if I go to my ter uh, create new terminal window, um, wait, where was it? Actually, instead of I will just do it here. Um, we'll run it. It's too long to run it, to be honest, for some reason. Ah, yeah, because I don't have anything uh, in the uh, paste it into the console. So what we will do, we will go to localhost 4000. We will get an error, but this is a, a good error. It means we still have something. And, and here we will have uh, the graphical express. We will have graphical with docs. We won't have all the benefits of graphical playground, but we'll have all, all of this. So uh, with graphical playground, it brings me to uh, another point. I actually, we'll talk about that at uh, in a little bit when we'll cover different tooling. So let, the final thing for uh, for our server is let's create subscriptions and let's uh, get back to our. Um, uh, GraphQL Yoga server. And let's start adding subscriptions. So this one will be pretty straightforward actually. Much simpler than you probably uh, th think about it. Because like if you think about it, it's like web sockets and you obviously need to add a bunch of stuff. and yeah, but the, the thing is, it, it's pretty simple, GraphQL Yoga. So, um, let me just a second. Um, I think it's, it's here somewhere. Yeah, okay, so I have here a snippet for subscription and stuff like that. So w what I will do, I will create a channel with just a random number and I will get PubSub from GraphQL Yoga. So PubSub is based on GraphQL subscriptions library and it basically gives me the connection for WebSocket that, that I need. Um, so what I need to do um, in addition to that, I need to um, create my PubSub and then I need to pass it in a context. So I have a context um, uh, field here. I need to pass pop side, uh, sub inside. Uh, so the final thing is defining my subscription. I obviously need to define it in schema. So I'll define just one subscription for posts to return an uh, array of posts. And uh, here for uh, defined subscription, I say that this is like subscribe, uh, post, subscribe, this is the API. So the, the post is the subscription, then I have the subscribe uh, field, parent, args, and pub sub. So inside I will, I don't need this count anymore. What I will do inside, I will um, run a start async iterator with the name of uh, channel. 
so basically it's like I'm starting WebSockets channel and um, I will um, run PubSite publish synchronously with just like set immediate again it's like a simple example so that that's why it's done um, that way and it every place that I want uh, on change to hit my subscribe to like um, yeah to basically hit my subscription and uh, let it run I need to publish uh, so I call pops up publish in publish mutation delete post mutation add comment mutation um, create draft and obviously like in a real world example you will put it in some kind of reusable part of code you will do some logic and yeah uh, but here for simplicity we'll just do it that way so now if I run this Uh, so there is problem with the schema somewhere. Maybe I haven't saved it. Yeah, I haven't saved it. Uh, okay, so running my playground. Now what I actually will run, I will run it twice to see that my subscriptions are working. So I have this subscription here. Uh, I will run it. I have no posts and my subscription is, is uh, still running. Now I want to add a draft. Add a draft. This one is working. And actually the cool thing about uh, GraphQL Playground, you have a bunch of, uh, like you have the history, what happened. And uh, let's say I want to publish post. And now I want to add a comment to this post. So now with my subscription, I see what's going on. Uh, so I, I created this post and then I published and then, uh, yeah, I see only content because let's add published and let's add uh, comments, comments will be content, rerun it. So now, yeah, so this is what I'm getting. So I want to, let's say, delete my post. I will delete post with ID of post zero. And I will get back an ID. So okay, and my subscriptions are working. So uh, yeah, that's that's how it works. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is regarding how you create your uh, your server. And as you can see, it's like pretty straightforward, like really fast. You can do that. Um, and yeah, um, okay, let's go to our next topic for today. Um, ah, an additional thing I, I wanted to show you is documentation. So I can put the uh, a string above my, my post or put anything like above my post. And if I go to my playground, where, wherever it was, um now it's a different ground let's just open it from here i think i accidentally closed it so if i go to my playground i will see this documentation going into docs going into i think it was post 
so I have these type details so I can basically document as I as a code so I can put uh, documentation in schema it will be automatically brought to uh, like to this tool and for example uh, additional thing that I, uh, I had I had these this syntax so anything that I put here inside and by the way it supports markdown uh, Subscription doesn't necessarily want you follow changes, but just what you make it. Yeah, exactly. For like your own implementation, that's uh, that's how you how you do that. Whatever you publish, that that's what what, what happens. On Hasura, it, uh, it it's just like generated subscription by the engine, so it watches for the changes. So if you want to do like. Um, a custom logic based on um, like if, if you want to like have uh, something on top of Postgres uh, having all the GraphQL API that you need but do some kind of custom validations and stuff like that you can totally do that through the like creating your own server and um, like subscribing to only like tiny bits of changes or something like that um, yeah um, Okay, so for the um, for uh, for this uh, for the dogs, we have this type of syntax. Anything that I put inside uh, is uh, will, will run uh, will be brought to the client basically. So if we we'll run it right now, go to my playground, uh, different this yeah this one. I go to docs, posts, as ID. So as you can see, it supports Markdown. So description for a field, that was something that I added here. So you can actually create your docs and Markdown inside your schema and it's pretty nice because you uh, both documented it for um, like someone who maintains this API and also you document this for, for the front end uh, person that will consume this API. So it works um, like for, for, uh, for both directions basically. Um, okay, so now let's talk about like final uh, thing for today and then we'll get uh, to the questions. And then we'll wrap up with uh, like explaining what will be the exercise for, for today. Um, so the final part is uh, tooling. Um, so you already seen that you can use Playground. Already seen Hasura and uh, it, it's like tiny bit of its capabilities because it has like lots of uh, lots more, uh, more capabilities than, than I, I just show you showed you um, for graphical all these links will be in the repo by the way so for graphical you can go to this repo and you can um, basically read about all the settings how you use graphical and by the way if you want if you think about like creating your kind of dashboard and you want to embed graphical inside it similar as uh, what uh, is done in Hasura, you can totally add graphical and just import it uh, both on the server and you can import it on the client and just embed it into your uh, web UI. <coughs> Another thing that... <coughs> Sorry, just a second. Uh, another thing that is um, really cool in my opinion the, in terms of tooling, uh, we've seen after the playground, we've seen Hasura, we've seen graphical. There is Graph CMS, which was mentioned. Uh, Graph CMS is basically like it's a hosted uh, thing, and you can um, it's like a headless CMS. It's it's like a not free thing, right? So they have some kind of pricing model, but yeah, I heard about like I um, honestly haven't used it but I know people that used it. Um, so there is another cool 
like really cool thing um, GraphQL docs so GraphQL docs gives me the ability to take my GraphQL endpoint put it here and after composing my beautiful docs I will get docs for everything uh, so this will use introspection actually and will get all the uh, data for um, for my uh, like all of my API all of my types like everything so you see you can see I have directives here I can for example I have users aggregate query that is created uh, generate automatically for me by host engine so if I go inside I will see what it has inside and uh, I can traverse this uh, by just like diving into each level of uh, docs <coughs> and you will see descriptions here and uh, it's pretty descriptive also the cool thing is you can just take this thing copy paste it and just put it inside your docs and now uh, in addition to that you can also I think you can let's double check that uh, no I won't find it that way um, Just a second. If I go to GraphQL Docs, um, this GitHub. I think I can generate. Yeah, um, I can generate it uh, like all my docs or as like a build step or something. So it's a gem file and you can just build it on uh, like include it into your build step and just have it uh, created for you not necessarily uh, you don't need to use like the their domain or their, their tool you can just generate your docs for, for you and it's pretty interesting because uh, it has all uh, like additional stuff that you you don't see in in graphical or in playground uh, so let's try to check this again yeah for example you have your id so i can uh, double check that it's uh, it's a scalar i have timestamps I can see what is older by is and uh, yeah another thing I forgot to, to mention by the way you have enums that you can use in uh, uh, your type definition so uh, like older by that you uh, we've used it's it's an enum or for example we can have um, had this object author and blog post that we brought from stitched uh, schema and as you can see it's exactly the same as we defined that in GraphQL Yoga server um, film for example is something we brought to Hasura from um, a Star Wars API uh, so it also it has uh, additional data well, uh, that we can we, we can just read this dog basically this uh, huge part of these dogs is uh, like something that you get from playground or from graphical but there are also like more high level constructs that you won't get for, from there uh, but you will get here for example you can see the schema mutation type square type subscription type but we couldn't see that from from graphical unless we query specific uh, specific part um, and we have input and input this is something we will be covering uh, tomorrow uh, we'll cover input types because you might wondered uh, why I should pass, the, uh, pass my um, data 
this mutation that way and at some point what we've seen in Hasura I had older and I not an older I had objects and I had to pass an object inside so this is basically an input type and we'll um, be implementing this tomorrow um, along with interfaces and union types and um, yeah tomorrow will be also really interesting um, cool so final step is um, just to commit everything so you will have all all of these uh, so um, ah, uh, I think <coughs> yeah let's commit it I had some changes uh, had some melt conflicts second I need to resolve some conflicts and then we will uh, meanwhile if you have questions just ask them um, uh, in chat and uh, yeah that okay cool so right now you have your exercises and um, speaking of exercises so what you have for today you need to create your own server for a second day project using either global variable or some kind of database I would suggest using a global variable for now just to get the hand of uh, like to, to play around with the server and, and like feel how it looks like and <coughs> uh, yeah and um, for the um, any, any need to recreate basically queries mutation that you're use, already using for a second day um, and tomorrow we will be adding another layers on top of that so it's important to like finish all of these um we will obviously rec recap on how we create the server uh, similar to like how we recap every day and what we've learned uh, so far <coughs> so again uh to um um yeah, so we have done all of these and now uh, we are left with the fourth day input files, authentication, custom scholars, interfaces, unions, validation and execution. Um, yeah, so we will be talking about more advanced stuff. Um, thanks for watching today. I'm I'm still here in, in chat for like a couple of minutes. So if you have questions, just like type them in, uh, in chat. I will answer them. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, so regarding caching, I will uh, actually let's let's add it here for tomorrow. Uh, I definitely need to show you how caching works. Um, maybe we'll put it somewhere. I think here, and I'll uh, yeah, we'll talk about 
these ones and uh, cache him and authentication, validation and execution. And um, yeah, well, authentication obviously there's a lot and caching, there are like tons of things to, to talk about, but uh, we, um, we kind of need to um, be proportional on uh, like amount of things we can cover in the, in this bootcamp. Uh, so in authentication, uh, obviously, if I won't cover some some part of thing, uh, so some uh, things, I will just like send you links and uh, yeah, um, that's how it will work. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So, uh, if you have other questions, can I create a React app but using only Hasura, Prisma plus database without any node? Um, you can use. Um, that's a, that's a good question. GraphQL can be used with uh, any server, basically. Uh, let me just find something and, and show you. Um, so for example, um, let's say you want to play, uh, create Elixir, uh, Elixir uh, server, right? So you have AppSync GraphQL, and this is the implementation of GraphQL, and this is for Elixir. Or let's say you have um, Ruby. Um, so you have GraphQL Ruby. So you have lots of uh, lots of uh, implementations for the for GraphQL on the server side. So um, I'm not sure if you can use uh, Prisma with them. I'm not sure because I know like Prisma is mostly with Node. With Hasura, you can totally. It doesn't matter for the server. Oh, yeah, with Hasura, it's, it's kind of serverless because you don't uh, you don't have a, uh, you don't need to set up your own server, right? You need to run this engine on a Docker container anywhere. And then, if you want to do custom logic, you can do your custom logic however you like. If you want to have GraphQL uh, a schema with, uh, with custom logic and GraphQL server written in any language that you want, you can totally do that. Um, I'm not sure if you can do that with Prisma, uh, though. I'm, um, but you, you probably uh, need to do this with a um, specific implementation for this server. Um, what you can do in addition to that for the, the custom logic, you can use, it, it, and this is like for something that I will cover tomorrow at 11 a.m. PST in Hasura streams. Um, if you want to be like complete serverless, if you don't want to like have any GraphQL instance running or something like that, you can think about this in uh, more like. Um, functional uh, way I guess um, so it's, it's like similar as you have Redux in, in React you have um, actions filed um, firing and you have um, reducers that change the state based on actions so with Hasura for example whenever that data changes you can trigger something that's called event triggers and these event triggers can be can trigger basically any um, uh, server or any like any webhook uh, eventually like um, so you define whenever you want this table for example um, post table when uh, on every insert or even on every um, no not on insert on every update of uh, let's say user ID you want to uh, trigger some URL, uh, which will be like a Lambda function or like any serverless function or just your custom validation or whatever you like. 
uh, you, if you put some things here, so what will happen whenever this user ID or let's say when I want whenever uh, somebody likes my post, I want to send an email, I, like spamming everyone, <laughs> I, I don't know. So uh, I will post, uh, put a custom webhook here, uh, URL of, let's say, a Lambda function that triggers uh, like mailer or whatever and uh, then it will just automatically run. So in that way, you just don't, you don't need to create your server, basically, you just need to create um, your Lambda function, Azure function, Google Cloud uh, platform functions, something like that. But yeah, um, speaking of servers and connecting things uh, between Hasura and servers, so, so this is one way, other way is do it through remote schemas, and here's you, you're not limited to technology. Any GraphQL server will do. I hope this answers your question. You have multiple uh, databases. How would I set up the GraphQL server to communicate with all of them? So. Uh, on the server, if we go into, let's say, uh, my index here. So I have a resolver, right? So I can resolve for my query and I get data from uh, like this uh, custom, uh, like this global variable, right? But let's say I have like several databases. So I, I want to get posts from one database and then I want to get uh, maybe even part of this post. I want to get author, not as part of this draft, but as part of like uh, resolving this author from separate database. I can totally do that. Uh, <coughs> and um, yeah, so that's how you consolidate things. In terms of how we do that in the most efficient way, uh, it really depends on which databases you are using and what um, what are implementations and uh, <coughs> you need to be aware of the performance fact. So if you have like several databases and you're trying to pull data from like three or four databases and you do it like you're waiting for, let, let's say your post resolver is connected to one database, uh, database pulling the data from from it, then pulls data from other database from from third one, and it uh, it does that in like synchronous matter or something like that. It will still be slow, right? Because I mean, it's your resolver implementation. So, however you implement your resolver, uh, the result will go uh, will be returned from from the query. The cool thing about GraphQL that if you return the, if the result that you will get from the database won't match the the type defined, you will get an error. And that's a cool part, because you want this uh, type of uh, uh, enforcement. And uh, tomorrow we'll talk more about valid validating these things. Yeah, I hope this answers uh, the questions. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, uh, cool. So let's, uh, unless you have other questions here, let's wrap uh, wrap up for, for today. And uh, you have a huge assignment for, uh, like still from, from yesterday, if you haven't completed it and uh, for today and uh, it will continue with you uh, tomorrow and I'm like eager to see uh, what you will do with this uh, um, uh, like the final implementation of uh, this uh, kind of project so if you um, do that and um, put it on github totally like tweet at me and uh, I will um, jump in and review that and uh, yeah, I'm also like really excited to see what your um, answers to this, uh, your solutions basically of this uh, exercise. Okay. Um, cool.
cool thanks everyone for watching um, um, if you want to um, have like um, additional uh, hour of um, like explaining Hasura uh, things uh, so this is I think this is the Hasura streams on Twitch so this is the link I will paste it here so tomorrow there will be an event of uh, like Hasura engine overview 11 a.m. PST so uh, feel free to join it's it's a free event right so feel free to join and I will talk more about like, more in depth on uh, uh, Hasura part and on like um, uh, various things there and um, s some of these things will be familiar to you because we already covered that during the course but um, we'll, I will uh, obviously explain more stuff on like permission side and, and like um, event triggers, remote schemas, stuff like that um, cool so thanks for watching everyone again and um, thank you see you tomorrow Bye.